Welcome to In Moderation. The show where we give you a moderate dose of info, sarcasm, and we already know we're not approved. Welcome to In Moderation, where I'm being mimicked by this troll beside me. I'm not a troll. But our actual guest here (laughs) (laughs) is XB Movement, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Oh, yeah. XB Movement on TikTok. My name is Nathaniel Nolan. I'm a movement coach, um, and I actually have a lot of different disciplines, so that's kind of the umbrella term that I put it under, but yeah, it's... I make training content. So that's really the long and short of it. Um, and you kind of look like you're becoming like Spider-Man the way you're just able to move. Yeah. I see, I see. Yeah. That's, I would say that's one of my inspirations is, is uh, Spider-Man and fictional characters. That's, I mean, that's how um, any, any discipline has progressed is somebody imagines up something fake and then people start kind of plugging away at it and trying to figure it out. So Definitely model it. Yeah, life imitate life imitates art, all that good stuff. So don't you do do you do more like calisthenics? Yeah, so pr- pretty much everything in the movement field um, I'm open to. So I do calisthenics, uh, break dancing, uh, jujitsu. I just Ooh. started skateboarding as a 33 year old. So I also um, do a lot of stuff that I'm probably too old to, but. How many times have you hurt yourself oh. already doing that? I'm sure it seems like one of those well, things. more more than I can count. So, do you hurt yourself more skate with trying to skateboard or with uh, everything else? Because it seems like it kind of no, no. Different. By far, skateboarding is much more dangerous than anything else that I do. Um, yeah, Come every yeah. actually everything you would see on my TikToks where I'm like doing handstand jumps from a platform to like the floor from two or three feet up uh all of that stuff is really super safe i never ever get hurt in the gym in fact i've been doing this walking on my hand series for the last three years and i've had zero injuries in three years yeah wow yeah i find it really Dang. it's kind of interesting people will see a video of someone doing something what they perceive as crazy in a gym or you know some type of something and you're like actually no you know i i bust my toe on the fucking uh coffee table yeah. a lot more than I actually hurt myself doing some sort of, <laughs> sort of like exercise. Like that's actually like, if you know what you're doing, it's actually the problem. The reason people hurt themselves often in this gym is because they have no fucking clue what they're doing. Right. They get in their there. They look at the little picture training. on the machine. They're like, this goes there. So I just kind of throw it there. Is that how that works? And you know, once you actually start to learn a little bit, it's not your the likelihood you're going to get hurt as long as you have a little. Yeah. Bit of I would say my sessions lovely. are probably my like, safest periods throughout the day because it's where i'm the most focused i usually i'm very klutzy because i'm a very distracted person so if i'm not training then my mind's elsewhere and i will end up like stubbing my toe or you know falling Mm -hmm. and hitting my knee on something but when i'm training that's when i'm actually like focused on my movements i'm very present so yeah somehow i get away with doing a bunch of crazy stuff and never get hurt what's your favorite swear word when you stub your toe oh that's a good question um i have a a daughter that's about to turn two so all of my swear words have been converted to like pseudo swear words so i use a lot of like little kid terms like like oh heckums and stuff like that like i yeah so i've I've kind of lost a lot of my curse words at this point and they've been replaced with the uh the baby versions that's cute. That's, That's really cute. Actually. I'm going really full cute. bore. My daughter's one year old. She's gonna be swearing as soon as she talks. I swear, yeah. her first words are gonna be "fuck shit" and all everything else. Like uh, I, oh. I'm pretty sure her yeah. first words are gonna be "fuck you, daddy. You ain't sleeping." <laughs> okay, that she, works too. It's listen. Uh, we can we all agree that it is very funny when you see a small child go shit after it they drop something funny, yeah. like that is like peak comedy right there i will never not right laugh at well that's the reason i'm trying to keep my daughter from cursing because then it's just going to continue to reinforce itself as i laugh at her letting out curse words yes so. oh no 100 percent. i'm gonna be a terrible parent that's basically what i'm trying to say it's like it's gonna it's it's gonna be bad but either you know a terrible what? parent or the best parent ever uh, you know, it depends. Every, it's all in the eye of the beholder. So basically exactly. what I'm saying is do whatever you want. Yeah, if you have to try to be the worst parent, then you've already failed at that. Because <laughs> you're trying. 
So what got you into like the, you know, the movement, the calisthenics and that sort of stuff? I, you know, I always find that interesting. I definitely consider myself more of like, you know, I enjoy going to the gym and lifting weights. But, uh, you know, I, I think there's there's a there's a strong group of people that really enjoy just like, I'm just going to use my body yeah. and that's it. Why? Uh, well, I mean, it, it was kind of a slow, gradual uh, migration from traditional training over to more less traditional stuff and more body weight stuff, um, because I did used to do just traditional weightlifting and bodybuilding. Um, and then I started learning how to do handstands like, I don't know, it was like probably 12, 13 years ago. And so that was my introduction into it. I was like, I just want to be able to do that because I'm still, yeah. I mean, it's just like, you just see something you're like, that looks cool. And I think that's what everybody needs is like that yeah. sort of little entry point, just something to be interested in. And then over the years, as I've added more skills to my tableau of things that I'm able to do, uh, it's more options is just going to help to kind of inform what you choose whenever you decide, hey, I'm going to get a workout in. So, and then also skill based movements like calisthenics, uh, hand balancing, stuff like that, they are really super accessible. So you don't have to go to the gym if you don't want to. Like I used to go to the gym right. to work on handstands, then I realized, like, oh, I don't need to do that to get my training and then just save myself that drive to and from. Yeah, you can break everything around the house. Yeah, well, that's ball. that's the challenge, right? Is to not to not do that. <laughs> and then, oh, I what I would, I was just gonna say, like that is what I was hoping you touch on because for so many people, I think the a big impediment to them working out is like, okay, so it takes me, all right, I gotta get ready, get all my shit, let me get in the car, let me drive to the gym, you know, let me put my stuff away, I start working out. By the time all that's happened, let's just say 20 minutes has gone by. Then you have to leave the gym, go back home. Let's say that's 40 minutes. Every time you want to go to the gym, even if you're going to gym three days a week, over the course of a year, I, fuck, I, 365 days, I it would take me five hours to do that math. But let's just say it's a lot of time wasted just driving, moving, going back and forth. And if you can remove yeah. that barrier, I think for a lot of people that would get them more interested or at least more willing to try something along Yeah, even lines. just blending it in. And that's actually what my whole training philosophy is built around my method, which is the XP method, is taking that amount of exposure that you're getting at the gym, that you're going to the gym for, and then focusing on just that. And it's like, okay, well, instead of thinking about it as I have to go to the gym to get this exposure, there are limitless, countless ways I can get that. So because like, just like you were talking about, like how much time do you spend in a year driving to and from the gym? And then also how much yeah. added to that, how much time do you spend getting dressed to go to the gym, getting undressed Right, exactly. Putting your shit away. You got to pay for the gym. You have to, there's, there's all these things. You're dealing with people there. You're watching Joey Swole and you're like, oh shit, everyone at the gym mm -hmm. sucks ass. Like, I don't want to <laughs> yeah, be in and that I, environment. I don't necessarily so, have anything against the gym I, in, inherently. No, I, I right. do like to, I think that the idea of having of a dedicated place to go and use equipment and just kind of have your mindset be on training is good. Um, but I, I think that it's all the other little things, even like when you're at the gym, like I'm going to set aside an hour to go to the gym. Okay. Well in that hour, right. I can only do so much in an hour. So like, if I say I wanted to spend 30 minutes on my hands, which is something that I've done for over a thousand days consecutively. Now, every single day I spend 30 minutes on my hand. Okay. If I go to the gym for an hour, I'm not going to be able to spend 30 minutes of that hour on my hands being super duper productive. Um, in the same way that I would be able to, if I were to break up that 30 minutes all throughout the day. So what happens is we go to the gym. A lot of times we just spend right. a good portion of it resting. So it's like you are at a location right. that you drove to, yeah. to do nothing for a portion of that. 100%. Yeah. And, and that's actually why I started taking all of the goals, the things that I'm wanting to work on in the gym and trying to boil them down to how much time I'm actually spending getting exposure to this thing. So let's just take, take bicep curls, for example, say you're working on your, your pool day and um, through all of the exercises that you do for that. So you do like six different exercises, five sets of each one of them uh, for 10 reps each or something like that. Right. How much time do you think you actually spend with your elbow loaded under like in loaded flexion? 
that all boils down to like two, three minutes total across that hour that you spend there. <laughs> it's right. pretty sad. Like, I listen, this, again, coming from someone who loves the gym, I go there all the time. But like, you you go there, you you do a lift, you sit there, then you check your Facebook and you look at your ex, Brenda, who's doing so much better than you. Like, fucking bitch, damn it. Like, you know, my life sucks. Why is, why is everyone else doing better than me? And then you hate lift more, which, hey, listen, that works. Don't get me wrong. But the nice thing about being at home is you can actually do something and then you're like, oh shit let me put that away let me fucking load the dishwasher my dog just threw up because they were eating a bunch of stuff outside that i told them not to but they don't speak english still fuckers so you know i think having just being able to work out at home gives you more opportunity to to do things if like and do you have like a dedicated space at your house where you kind of have like just a little area where you're like this is what kind of where i do most of my yeah i've got i like basically converted my den into a home gym so i've got it's mostly just open floor spaces like by main requirement i just need to be able to have like a little bit of space to train but i also have like weights and pull-up bars which i think that that is if i was ever going to recommend just one piece of equipment for every single person to have is like something to be able to hang all of your body weight from Um, but yeah other than that i mean i have a home gym but i do my training like all throughout the house Um, i i'm doing okay Mm -hmm. yeah what would you recommend for someone they don't have the space for a home gym you know they're just trying to get something done you know like how can they make do with what they? yeah i I get that question a lot because people see my videos and they're like well i don't have a whole room dedicated to this and honestly like a lot of people because when they're first getting started on something feel kind of insecure they don't even want to do it in an open shared space where their family can watch them so i would just tell people like you can get started in the space of a yoga mat I mean, if you're doing something like handstands, push-ups, any sort of calisthenic movements, like you're not going to occupy more space than your body length and width most of the time. So you really don't need a lot of space. And it's really just about like figuring out what it is that you're trying to do. If it's weight bearing on your hands, like the stuff that I, I work on, well, you can do that whether you have a lot of space or a little bit of space. And then also you don't even need to have floor space at all. I, I, I like to point out that, you know, you can use countertops, tabletops, the wall. Uh, Mm -hmm. There's, there's so many ways to train that a lot of people don't consider. I think most people have at least some open space on the floor. You know, if you look at that, watch an episode of Hoarders, you know, there's maybe a few people that don't. Even they have like a pathway, I think, that you could probably yeah. get something done. But yeah. for most people, you have something. And for me, listen, here's what I would recommend. And then you tell me like how my recommendations are from, from decent to total dog shit. I would say for someone who's like trying to get, um, you know, just a decent workout in with body weights. Let's say they have no... Uh, equipment whatsoever you can get a lot done with that i would say focus on like three so there's kind of like three major movements i would say you know there's some type of pushing exercise some type of pulling exercise and some type of you know leg exercise so take the legs squats are just the easiest things like you know i think even if you can't do just like a full deep squat on your own just sitting on the couch sit back up if you're like really if you are new to training you're you can grow muscle from doing like damn oh, sure. nothing because you're just so untrained so if you're if you can sit down on the couch and then stand back up i don't care if you're watching your favorite show you could be watching fucking love island or one of those other shows that i can't stand it, you know watch whatever the hell you want but as long as you're doing you know just do something just you know do sit some down cozy couch, standing stand, stand back up uh you know and then if you can graduate to just doing you know, squats on your own. Maybe you have something in your house. Like you can, it, once you uh, graduate past that, you hold something heavy, you know, I don't know, a two liter thing of water, or, you know, I don't know, yeah. just, your dog. Exactly. Yeah. You're, I mean, matter. you're just describing <laughs> yeah, progressive overload. And, and honestly, it's, it's, yeah. it's easier to do it. I think the way you're describing than to go into the gym and try to think about these abstract exercises that right. are then going to need to be reconverted back into those those normal functional movements that you're talking about, like standing up and sitting down from the couch is actually more functionally useful than being able to squat 400 pounds because you do it a lot more often. Um, So that's actually a hilarious thing. That's just what they want to do. They just want to be able to do daily activities and just be, you know, somewhat physically fit. Yeah. That's a hilarious thing is that like so many people go to the gym to do functional training and it's honestly, it's, Functional training the more is your you abstract life. it, the less functional it actually is because you're removing it from the function itself. That's why I always tell people, like, you don't really need a big program to start off. Just think about the functions that you want to improve at and then find an accessible way to do those things. And then what you're describing by, like, standing up and sitting down at the couch and doing it in front of the TV is something, a concept that I call free XP, 
And I actually think that it is the greatest pool of exposure that you can actually get throughout your day. Like there's, you can do a lot more with simple activities like that. Like genuinely, you can fit in a lot more of that than you could ever program or set aside time for, for sessions. Uh, so a lot of people get confused with the gym, They're like a program, what are these exercises? I don't know. And I think this is a great place to get started. Like, okay, so then you take your pushing exercise. Like, okay, I can't, many people tell me like, oh, I can't do a push up. That's totally fine. You don't even start off with, you know, you see these, hey, listen, it's cool to watch someone on TikTok do like a one handed push up. I tried that shit. It's fucking hard. Listen, I'm going to blame it on me being tall. I'm <laughs> six foot three. That's the problem. It's not because I'm weak. That's not why at all. Um, yeah, so I would Sally. Start... No. Exactly. Who the hell's named Sally anymore? Pick a real George. A stupid George. Do you know George Foreman named <laughs> yeah. all his kid George? Every one of them, even his daughter. Fucking weird, man. But anyway, um, so uh, I would start with like pushing against a wall. So you so you stand back from a wall. You, you know, you lean against the wall, you push forward and back from the wall, you start there, then maybe you can graduate to doing push ups on your knees, then maybe to, you know, full push ups. And then, you know, you put your feet on the couch, decline push ups, slowly just, you know, kind of raising the bar, if you will, and making it a little and like you said, progressive over overload for anyone that doesn't know, that's just kind of making shit harder. Like you, you do something when it's hard, when it becomes easier, you do something that's a little bit harder, whether that's doing more reps or adding more weight or, you know, graduating from pushing against the wall to pushing against the ground. Yeah. You but know? I, I think the, it's just I think the, the problem that a lot of people have is that they don't even consider those lower intensity options, like putting your hands on the wall, putting your hands on the arm of the couch to do your push ups or a platform like that. Yes. People, a lot of times people think of the, the traditional version of the exercise that they're shown as square one. So they're like a regular push up on right. your toes like starting from a yes. hand plank position, that's square one. And then I have to move forward from there. And there's so many people that like that that's middle of the road for them. Like they need to start way, way uh, before that right. in, in the progression. And, and they, they don't even consider it an option. And it's because like so many people online are showing exercises that are so much harder. And then they're like, well, just try this or to get to this, yes. do these exercises. And it's like, if you're untrained, then just like you were saying, literally any bit of movement is going to be Anything. is going to be going to cause. Put on your favorite music, your favorite show, make it a cozy cardio situation. We just go back and listen to that episode, yeah. whatever. Um, and then I would say like uh, for it's a little bit more difficult to do some type of pulling exercise at home. Now, like you were saying, if you have something you can hang from, like a lot of people, I'd say most people probably couldn't even do if especially if you're untrained doing a pull up right off the bat. That's going to yeah, be agree. pretty yeah. hard. That's a low right? percentage. Um, so. <laughs> Yeah. So, and that's totally fine. I think a lot of people are like, oh, I can't do a pull up. Fuck it. Whatever. I give up. So instead, I mean, it is a little bit tougher. I would say to do just like a straight body weight exercise. There's some like kind of interesting ones you could look up, but uh, we've talked about this before. I highly suggest if you're going to work out at home, invest in some bands. They're like 20, yeah. 30 yeah. bucks. You know, you get a set of them. You can attach a band to, they usually have things that will go over like the door frame, like that little fucking satchel thing on the back. You close the door, it sits yeah. against the door and then you can pull against the band and just yeah. doing some type of pulling where, you know, you start away from your body and you pull into your body. You don't have, it doesn't have to be fucking complicated, but keep it basic. You know, oh, after about 10 reps of those, I'm tired. Perfect. You did a good job. Do that a few times. And, you know, consistently over the course of weeks and months, you will yeah. get and stronger. I and for the love of God, do not do a pull up off a hollow core oh, door. Uh, it sounds like you're speaking from a bad experience. I have Wait, not you, done like, that because I'm smart the door? enough not to do that. Did you what? like? Did you hang on to the door and pull yourself? People up will the... hang on a door and do a pull up off the door, and most Why doors, at least dumb? indoor, are I wouldn't even core. trust the hinges. They're not to be needed honest. to support weight. I know, like I don't. So there's like those pull up bars. I'm sure everyone listening has probably seen those where you just like hook it around yeah. the door frame. Even that's like sketch. I've seen some yeah. people like hanging upside down. Depends mm. on how well the door is made looking for a neck injury but just hanging yeah. on the door i actually trust my 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 uh, door frame bar i've had it for like 15 years and it's like one of the really cheap it's under 20 dollars, like on amazon that kind yeah and if you watch my more recent videos i'm like constantly hanging upside down on it but i would never recommend somebody do that it just really comes down to like everything that you um do is going to have some risk associated with it 
But of course. yeah, and, and then yeah. also pull-ups are another example of like people thinking that the traditional version of the exercise is square one. Like, like they, they know they can't do a pull-up, but they still see that as sort of a right. basic beginner exercise. So they're like, oh shit, I just got to play a little bit of catch up and then that's where I'll start. And it's like, really, you should set that as more of a like moderate or long-term goal and then try to build up to it. And just like, yeah. it's like if you were going to try to learn handstand push-ups, for example, you probably wouldn't start with a lower intensity version of a handstand push-up like a band assisted version of it. That would be silly to, to, to incorporate so much equipment when you can just do a regular pike push-up or just a regular push-up. Like a lot of people don't realize that you can just, you can literally just grab a door frame and then just, just do rows on the door and then progress that up. There you go. Yeah. I like and that. Literally. I like that a lot. Yeah. It's something sturdy. Yeah, something. A, a wall yeah, or something like sturdy. that. That's yeah. not going to crumble under your weight. Yeah, I will say like those, uh, if you do have a gym, like Planet Fitness is, Planet Fitness is always have these, you know, the assistant pull-up machine, machine. Yeah. underrated. I think that's such a oh, yeah. phenomenal machine. And I think yes. people get kind of like ego, yeah. like I got to put it the lowest setting possible or what, you know, or the highest, whatever the most gives you the most or the least resistance. But I think even for someone who can do pull-ups, that's a great machine. It kind of keeps you steady oh, and you're yeah. not swinging. You know, we all see, you know, and because you want to do more pull-ups, so you end up fucking kip, kipping. And yeah, you more kick your basically trying to get more pull-ups yep. then you're throwing your body around and like i so like if you have an assisted pull-up machine at your gym that thing i i, I i'm actually, this, actually like a big proponent of uh of like rpe5 strength work and stuff that's like much lower intensity like doing like zone two cardio but for strength work is is really really useful for for for, for prepping your uh your CNS and, and also just like normalizing the activity. If all of my pull-up work is under high intensity load, then whenever I go to do some extended moderate intensity pulling, it's not going to feel as comfortable. So it's like good to mix in, even if you can do a full body weight pull-up uh, to be able to blend in the lower intensity options. And the example I always give is like, oh, it's like it's riding a bike. Like if you're riding a bike, you're not like, well, I've been riding bike for three months now. So now I only use sixth gear like no you you always use all of the gears at all times it just really depends on yeah. where you're riding yeah. and that's kind of how i structure my training too like i wake up in the morning and i do like rpe one two and three stuff all throughout the morning and then i'll kind of fluctuate back and forth between the the options or the versions of the movements that i do depending on how my body is feeling just like how i would adjust the gears on a bike depending on if i'm like hitting a hit a hill or if i'm just feeling tired or something yeah let me just translate for people who are like, what the fuck? Uh, RPE, correct me if I'm wrong, rating of yeah. perceived exertion. So, yep. you know, you have one to 10, where 10 being like, oh shit, I feel like I'm going to die. Or you, you have kind of the opposite, which is RIR, reps in reserve, which is how many reps you'd have left basically in the tank. So if you did, uh, if it was a nine, that means you could have done one more if you really tried. Both of these just are kind of ways for people to sort of quantify how difficult Yeah, it's like what we have was. to do that. So like an RPE... Yeah, like an RPE five is something that's like not super difficult. Like it wasn't. Yeah, you can have a conversation. Super, super easy, yeah. but it was. It was yeah. in moderation. <laughs> yeah, so you're you're working. So you are exercising yourself, and I think people have the idea that you have to have an RPE of ten or an RIR of zero, where you're like you have to just go all out, which you really don't. Again, especially if you're new yeah. to like exercising, yeah. Yeah. just pushing especially. yourself. A little bit we'll get you there and pre like you said prepping your cns your central nervous system basically just getting your brain ready for what's going on just because when you start working out like you just don't really know much and like you know it's, it's you're figuring it all out so this is just kind of letting your body know hey this is kind of what's going on and we're gonna get yeah and i also it. think it's like what's going on Sorry. uh well i was i was gonna say i think it's like important to be constantly cutting down on periods of inactivity like for lower body stuff we have I like that. walking as this thing to break up yeah. these periods of inactivity so it's like maybe i'm only gonna squat heavy once or twice a week or maybe i'll squat heavy four times a week right but then that still leaves like three days where i'm not squatting heavy what's happening with my lower body in those days well if it was just like any other muscle group, it'd just be completely static. Well, then I would need like this extended warm up and cool down. And it would just be like going from, from, uh, no activity to maximal activity. Instead, we have this, this 
think we have walking and locomotion that constantly keeps our, our CNS primed, keeps those muscles warmed up, keeps blood flow going to those areas, synovial fluid going to those joints. And that way, whenever we're going to do our heavy squats or any of our lower body work, we've already sort of primed ourselves, but we don't have those, those walking type activities with pulling. We don't have those walking type activities with pushing, bearing weight on our hands, bearing weight on our upper body at all. And so a lot of times people are going from like four or five days or more of not performing that activity right. to doing the most intense version of that activity that, that they're capable of doing. Right. And they're wondering why they're feeling sore or achy for four or five days afterwards. And they actually need those four or five days. It's because you're coming off a period of a long period of inactivity, considering like that you're not doing that intensity that you're working at and you don't even have a lighter version of it to kind of keep your body prepped. And, and so it's just kind of common That's sense that you would not have the best results from that. And the example I always like to use is like, imagine if you didn't have walking, right? Imagine if like, all right, I'm going to improve my squats, but I'm going to treat it the same way I treat everything else. So I'm not going to walk unless I'm only going to walk to the squat rack and then back to my bed. Like how, how do you think yeah. that those squat sets are going to feel, or maybe, maybe not even squatting, maybe it's a different lower body activity, like sprinting, right? You lay in bed, like, uh, like Charlie's right. grandparents from, from Willy Wonka up until it's time to sprint. And then all in the same bed too. Like they couldn't get a nut, like all you really just all, I, that's got to stink so bad in there. Right. Anyway, well, I think ahead. it was for company, right? They, they wanted the company. <laughs> Oh boy, how do you get it on in like a space like that? You just like we got to keep it real quiet. I don't know. It really depends on on how close you are to those people. Um, but yeah. So, anyways, like yeah. Imagine imagine you lay in bed for for five days straight. Imagine that the feeling of atrophy. Have you ever just been sick for a few days and your body's like tingling because you just you just need to get up and move around, or you've been sitting in a car for like five hours straight and you need to get up and stretch your legs, right? Like your body wants yeah. those that that exposure it wants that uh that like dosage of of, of light intensity activity of the or exposure to that activity a lighter version of it um blended in with the high intensity work and it helps to kind of regulate how your body handles that um and then also it gives you a good idea going up into that activity if it's a good idea in the first place like imagine you didn't walk and you go straight to the squat rack like you're, you're not really going into it with a lot of information about how your lower body is your lower body's condition at that point you're basically just guessing and that's what a lot of people do with handstands right. which is the reason i developed my walking on my hands every day concept um <laughs> is that people will train it as hard as they can they'll train handstands until their hands and sore hands and wrists are sore and then they'll wait until that goes away and then train it again like four or five days later um and it's like you're just begging for an injury and I yeah it's really interesting because it's an interesting concept because you do need rest time. Obviously, if you're trying to build muscle, right? Like you need to, you know, you need to progressively overload. You need to stress the muscle, whatever, and you need to give it time to heal. But also I do like what you're saying. It's like, you don't want to just leave it completely inactive. Like when somebody gets an injury, right? A lot of times like, you're like, Oh, just rest it. Don't move it. And it's like, that's not really a great idea. You don't want to just have it not right. move at all. You just don't want to stress it out to where you're adding more damage. Oh, you yeah. want to keep it moving. You want to keep blood flow to the yeah. area. You know. Yeah, I mean, that. atrophy starts pretty quickly, and and honestly, like, I, I mean, just think about it. Like walking, like it, it's like if I if I did a heavy squat day, I'm not gonna rest by just not allowing myself to be on my feet for not four really. or five days in a row. Like that's that's not how you rest. Rest is something that it's really just about, like I said, using the gears of the bike to scale back the intensity and find the appropriate usage right. for that function in the meantime. Right. And then, like I said, it, it keeps your body prepped, but it more importantly, it gives you an up-to-date evaluation of how your body will respond to some version of that activity. So if it's like, you know, just going back to the lower body example, you go for a walk and your knee is kind of bothering you. Well, probably shouldn't load 300 pounds on top of that bar and then do some squats on that knee. That's giving you that information ahead of time, some foreshadowing so you don't make that mistake. You, when you take out those lower intensity versions of those movements, you're going into the higher intensity versions of it blind because you don't have an up-to-date evaluation. Your evaluation is based off of what you did several days ago, which is not accurate. 
Yeah. Right. So I'm kind of curious then, like, you know, how else can you like kind of keep your upper body like, oh, you know what I would go with? Shake weight. That just leaves a lot of jokes in there. You know? Like you imagine you're sitting around your house, like you have a friend over and you're like, hold on, you just bust out a shake weight and you're just. Oh, you know, I was going to. I was like, doing my shake funny. weight over here. If that's what if you guys were wondering what this was. Yeah, it, that's. I know okay. I assume that, but like I was leaving that for the yeah. watchers on YouTube to be like, what the fuck's going on over there? <laughs> you know, that's just ripe for comedy. And then you get some laughter in there. And as we say, that's always important. So, guys, uh, Shake Weight is now endorsed by In Moderation. There you go. Funny. <laughs> that's funny. Because funny. Because funny. <laughs> because it's but, funny. Man. I mean, yeah, I don't I, really, oh. I mean, I, I don't think that there would be anything negative associated with doing a Shake Weight or something like that. But I don't, I don't really, I can't immediately attach that to any functions that i am currently trying to improve i mean what is, what is it it's just like i mean you know so how can we keep our like upper body then kind of more you know active well you know that's something like i've actually been inspired by you to incorporate more of that walking on hand stuff with my clients and it's noticeable oh, yeah. like they come back to me and they're like wow my upper body is like so much more versatile and feels better and they get some of that lower intensity stuff on the days that they're not necessarily hitting their arms yeah. and stuff is hard, heavy oh and i was yeah. gonna say and, and then also the other thing about adding in that variety is that you're gonna run into areas that you didn't even realize aren't quite up to the same level as the like ranges or the areas that you're using in those traditional lifts like if i do a bench press it's not going to necessarily work all the same things that I'm going to do during bear crawl because I'm moving along a lot of different planes. So if I try to translate my bench press to jujitsu, well, that's going to work as I move all along that very specific plane that as soon as I start to operate outside of that, then I'm back to being as weak as I was, you know, before I started progressing that push exercise in the first place. So you got to kind of, it, it also gives you an opportunity to explore like kind of your weakest areas, but with those low intensity options, it's not so scary that you just straight up avoid them. You're like, okay, well that was hard, but now I have a way to kind of pick at it. And in doing so, I, I start to kind of shave away at those, those weaknesses that I wasn't even aware of before. And that's, that translates tremendously to being able to actually use those abilities in a different setting. Right. And, and I think um, all this stuff is oh. kind of like, you know, it's well and good. You know, you got like, oh, we can try this and that. I, I think we can't just leave out. It's fun. Like, I think that's the big, like, honestly, with a lot of people, I always just get the like, how do I like find the motivation to exercise, I guess. Right. Like that's uh, I think this is the biggest problem for most people. Right. They just don't find the motivation they don't find it fun they find it boring all that good stuff and they're just like you know i'm just not going to do it and i you know finding something that's just you know more fun for you i think like trying to do a handstands or whatever like just you know it's just it's it's interesting it's different it's just something else instead of going to the gym and go i pick things up and put them down yeah. you know what i'm saying keep it fun you say that yeah Yes. Um, so <laughs> sorry to kind of jump in a little bit. Uh, speaking of uh, being inspired by you and stuff like that, the entire reason why Rob has brought me to this chair in the first place was to basically like start learning a little bit more about like the whole fitness community and stuff like that, because um, I have been trying to get into like the whole fitness thing and like the whole gym thing and stuff like that for quite a bit of time. And I have been, at least in my mind, thinking that I have been making like little to no progress because I'll show up to the gym, find a couple dumbbells, go one, two, three, four, five, look at my arms and be like, oh, I look pretty good. And then I'll go home. And so like listening to what you're talking about with like being comfortable with like starting out small and like building it up to the point where it's like, you know, you can stack more and then stack more and stack more and just like finding like simple options at like home and just like incorporating all of these different things. It's also a really, really big eye, eye opener for like me. And also I guess for some like other people listening who probably don't know like where to start and stuff like that. And so yeah, you know, I've been really locked in for the last like 40 minutes that you've been talking. Oh, I've just been like, 40 minutes. okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, very, very, very insightful stuff. I've just been 
like sit here just like it's i'm paying more attention than i paid attention in like high school so this is this is like actually <laughs> but, I, mean, amazing. I, I, I joke around that the stuff that i my, my methodology is is common sense like it's a common sense approach like if you want to get better at something do that mm. thing and find an accessible way to do it right. like you say it out loud it's like, oh duh but i but i was training <laughs> just like you described a second ago like that's how i was training whenever i first got started i would go to the gym i pick something up a number of times i and i look at my muscles in the mirror and I go home and um yeah and, and honestly <laughs> like if that is fun for you just like you were saying Liam like that is that is a great yeah. way to train like you don't have to change anything about that you don't need to start to like seek out functional or or like uh less traditional forms of training for it to be fun or effective if you like going to the gym and lifting weights but it's like just figuring out a way to gamify it. I think progressive overload in itself sort of like already adds gaming mechanics to any uh, yeah. style of training because yeah. there's this, yeah, there's this level, level system up. kind of built into it. But I, other than that, like, I mean, you're, you're sort of like constantly managing and competing with, with yourself. So if it's like going to the gym and lifting weights, like then you have this you know previous save state and you're working on trying to make progress in the game that that could be just as fun as anything else i i actually really enjoy lifting weights it's just that i've just found something that i genuinely enjoy more that's just actually more related to the things that i need my physicality mm. for but, so let me ask you then, just for someone who's like, okay, th I'm, I'm interested, but I, I have no fucking clue where to start. What would you tell people, you know, just kind of like day one? What, what would you So generally, do? like, I try not to tell people what to do until I get to know them, just because that's, mm -hmm. that. I think that that is something that all coaches should kind of adopt is listen before you start right. talking. So many coaches are just ready to be like, here's your prescription. I know best. And it's like, you don't, <laughs> you don't know best. And, here's your copy. Yeah, exactly. Plan. And I honestly, that like, even through like the height of my virality on social medias, like I never released a program I that I didn't um, sort of like Sherpa people through personally because I, I don't want to hand somebody something that they are going to be able to misuse. So I, I, I think that programs are something that I, I think should be, should be, um, should be handled with a professional or with somebody that is knowledgeable. I mean, you can do it yourself. Like you can program for yourself and you can manage programs on your own, but I think it's something that it, it requires a lot of nuance. And the way I like to describe it is I think of, um, I think of programs as like a roadmap. So it's like, here, here's a, a, or a list of directions. So if it's like, somebody's like, Oh, well, how do I get to the mall? I can't just hand you a list of directions of how to get to the mall from A to B because who knows where you're starting from A is here. Right. So I, I, I think that, you yeah. know, if I handed you a, a, a program that's supposed to get you from like zero to handstand. Right. Well, I don't really know what your zero is and it may not be appropriate. Maybe you're somewhere along else along that line. So I think it's better to, for people to give people some, even though it can be a little bit uh, less tidy is are some paradigms and some uh, some some different principles that they can work with that aren't super prescriptive that give them the ability to kind of play around. So I, I usually give people some very, very simple ob exposure objectives in the beginning. Like, okay, again, there has to be some element of knowing what they want to do. I can't just give somebody uh, a program based on zero information, but let's say they wanted to be able to like a lot of people are like, I want to do the things that I see in your videos. Okay. That's a starting point. I know okay, you want to be able to walk on your hands. You first should ask yourself, how much do I spend on my, how much time do I spend on my hands already? right? Before I even start adding anything in, ask yourself that question and figure out how much you spend, how much time you spend on your hands. You may be spending more or less than you think. And then from there, take that amount of exposure and decide what is my goal exposure. So if I'm spending, let's say zero second, zero minutes on my hands a day. Okay. Well, then I would probably start off by saying, I want you to spend, try to spend one minute bearing weight on your hands every single day. And then Instead of giving you the prescription of how to do that, I would give you an array of options that then you can choose from, just like the gears on the bike, but they would all probably be really low intensity options and allow you to do that for a week or so. And then in doing so, you build up a lot more confidence and autonomy, wielding that those, that, those programming elements, and then eventually it becomes a program. Then if I were to say, here is your list of activities that you have to do. I want you to do, you know, a minute plank every day. I want you to do this many squats, blah, blah, blah. Um, 
if, if I'm doing that, then I'm already taking from you some of the, the critical thinking that is actually required for, for long-term success with training. So I, I don't really like to give people program and I, programs, even simple ones, until I've talked to them. And then even then, I usually like to start people off with uh, parameters and objectives instead of a program. So it's like, I'm going to try to try to do this thing within these boundaries uh, to the best of your ability. And, and in doing so, you're going to develop a better understanding of the thing that you're actually trying to improve at. Yeah, because that really, of course, we always talk about constantly, you know, everyone's different, everyone starts at a different place. But the, you know, one thing I will just say for people is, you know, if it's challenging for you, that's usually a pretty good start. If you're like, hey, this is, you know, somewhat difficult, I can do it, but, you know, it's not easy. That's a great, because for a lot of people, they just don't even, the, the yeah. basics. And I even go a step further and to say, know, right? yeah. it should be easy. I, I think that, because, I mean, lots of things are hard. I would say that there are more things that you can't do than that you can do. So there's a lot. Right. Speak for yourself. <laughs> and I am. I'm speaking for myself because even at this <laughs> point in my training, there are, there's the, the like on the spectrum of things I can and can't do. Like I, the stuff that I can't do is, is you know, far beyond what I can. Um, but I always tell people like start with what and, and spend most of your time in th like things that are comfortable and easy. And then only occasionally push into that challenge level because what you want to do is try to normalize the activity that you're trying to get better at. And I know this actually rubs people the wrong way a lot of the time whenever I'm first introducing this concept because we have this, this notion where things have to be challenging to see progress. But in reality, that's not right. how it works. Like you, you developed and, and you taught yourself how to walk. And it wasn't like this this every day I'm going, I'm trying to do one more step than yesterday. No, you just over time, over a long period of time, you develop the ability to walk and you never thought about it. It wasn't hard. It was comfortable and easy. And you did what you can and look to where you are now. Now you don't even think about it and you are great at walking. I don't even never seen you walk before in my life, but I'm just going to go ahead and assume for this purpose that you are pretty good at it. You built that ability without putting in a bunch of effort. You don't need to do that. You don't like, like I said, like, Adding in all of these lower intensity, low RPE options, it gradually drags the whole system forward. And so now I do things like handstand push-ups, jumping into my or like into a handstand, uh, pistol squats, one arm chin-ups, all of that stuff. And I train at low intensities every single day without long extended periods of rest because these are just normalized activities for me. So it's not about like going out and seeking what's challenging. I like to seek what's challenging to, to then put a, put a pin in it and put a marker on it. And then I scale back a whole lot and I gradually climb up to that challenge level instead of every day, just like taking a stab at it, because that's how you end up getting injured. That's how you end up getting um, like derailed for any number of reasons. Like you get burned out, you get distracted, you, you know, whatever. So oh. instead it's like every day without, without fail, and without question, I will be doing this thing. And if I do it every single day, and this is actually my training principle, if I can find a way to practice something every single day without making things worse, I will improve. And, and that's, it's, it's just a universal truth. If you do something all the time and, you, and you're not getting worse at it, you'll get better. So you don't need to necessarily seek out the challenge level. You just seek out the function itself and you find accessible ways to do it. And it's like you taught yourself to walk. You taught yourself to talk. You taught yourself how to do all to, to drink from a can. Nobody showed you that. You didn't train for that. It used to be too heavy for you. It used to be the coordination used to be too challenging. But look, you're doing it now. And look, you're doing it great. You're doing a great job. You haven't spilled a drop. Yeah. Thank you. Have you. I, I you, am never, you haven't hit this. failure at all on any of those can lifts. Um, <laughs> yeah. Not I yet, anyway. Not it's yet. an interesting yeah. concept, and I, I, I do like it. What I will say is I think, like you said, though, you do have to occasionally oh, yeah. challenge yourself a little bit because you can yeah. stay in the same place forever. You could just be like, I'm just doing the same thing. And if you never 
uh, you know, push yourself even a little, you most likely just stay where you are. Like, let's take the walking, for example. My daughter's starting to walk. She falls down all the time. Like, it, it, it's, it is, I would say, it looks challenging to her to walk around, but she is figuring it out. She is getting better at it by doing it over and over. But I wouldn't say it's easy for her. It's just slowly getting more, it's slowly getting more easy as yeah. she continues to do it. But I like what you're saying in that, you do the same thing every day and it doesn't have to be this super challenging thing. I think we've kind of lost the idea of like, you know, so many people think you have to challenge yourself to the point where, yeah, like I was saying earlier, where you like, you have to have an RPE of 10 or an RI of zero. You have to push yourself all out, which is absolutely not true. Um, But I think, you know, doing a little bit, like we say each day adds up over time. I just think, you do have to at some point say, okay, well, I'm going to try oh, the yeah. next thing. And, you know, uh, like we say, if, progressive um, overload has to be there. Going to the, back to your, your walking example, um, like a lot of people think you have to go from 5,000 steps all the way to 8,000 steps sure. to 12,000 steps, whereas instead you can go 5,000 steps to 5,001 steps. Exactly, 5, yeah. 5,002 steps. And I think that's step. how you keep the challenge level down. Like for your example with your kid, like her walking – Although in your mind, you're like, as a, as a masterful adult walker, who is, you know, really got a lot of experience Mm -hmm. on her. You're looking at her and you're like, man, she's really struggling. But in her eyes, she's just doing the thing that she does every day. She's never experienced walking better than she's walked before. So to her, she's not like, she's not putting everything in the tank into this walking session. No, she's just doing her normal thing. So for me, it's like, people see me doing and there she is in the background. <laughs> yeah, so um, so people see me doing the stuff that I'm doing, and they think like, oh, well, yeah, the gap between our abilities would require a significant amount of effort for you to close that gap quickly, right? But if you can, just like you were saying, Rob, by adding one step, so instead of jumping from 5,000 to 10,000, you can just stroll from where you are to where I am. You might not like the timeline too much. It might be a lot longer. I think that, right, progressive overloading, you have to... But the challenge to, level... You know, push yourself a little bit yeah but you do the challenge level is where a lot slightly. of people get screwed up and they think that it has to be perceived as t- challenging and it really doesn't it just needs to be okay a little bit more advanced and i don't want to say challenging because that is a subjective term i like to use other terms that are right it just, it just has, has to be, has to be progressive. yeah it's just to be a little bit more than what you were doing it can literally feel the same like i said i train every single day so my training kind of I mean, it fluctuates in difficulty depending on what I want to work on, but I, I never train so hard that I can't train the next day. So I'm always, but I'm sure like you walking on your hands, you've fallen over. Oh, I, fall, like, I just you don't consider falling over to be that hard. Times. Like, it's just, that it's just, that's a performance thing. Like it, it, I, if I fall <laughs> over, it didn't take more or less effort to do it. It's just that that was just the result of it. As my balance improves, then I can just do it hmm. for longer, but it doesn't become any harder or easier. That's just the results of what I can do. And again, that's what I'm talking about. That can progress and that, and that way it becomes more challenging. So like, I, I see somebody that's doing trying to do a handstand push up when they can't even do a regular push. I'm like, oh, that person's really challenging themselves. But really, what they're doing is they're just trying to perform something that they can't do. So yeah, and and that's right. that's why I yeah. I think that it's that's why it's better to instead of giving somebody a prescribed movement or a, pres- a prescription in any way give them the options for them to be able to fluctuate through so that way they can then settle. Hi, baby settle into the option that feels right for them that day and actually doesn't exceed that challenge level. And like I said, over time, people don't realize this, but you will gradually work your way up from where you are to where you want to be. It just doesn't happen in a straight line. I think that when you, when you try to straighten that line out through effort, that is where you'll see like, okay, if I got to go in and and really put my all into this. So that way, next time I'm, I'm not here, I'm here. But really, it kind of happens in a spiral when you're training. Very, like, it, it, look at all pro athletes, and they most of them train on a daily basis, and it's this fluctuation of high, slightly higher intensity work to slightly lower intensity work, and it's just like I'm constantly spiraling my way up. So that way, even the lower intensity work on this day is still higher than the higher intensity work on this day, but it never, it never needs to go to an RPE ten. I don't, I truly, and that that is where again I think that this. This this that that particular paradigm kind of rubs people the wrong way because we have this sense of 
you get results from hard work, but I just don't see hard work as squeezing effort of trying to like do the exercise. I see hard work as, as managing a complex system over a long period of time. And it takes a lot of nuance. Right. Yes. I, I think this will really, I mean, we were talking, I was just talking about it earlier, you know, everyone's different. And what I find interesting about it is because I, I, there's nothing in this world for me like there is going to the gym and pushing a hard set as just to failure as far as I can go. And there's just this moment afterwards where I'm just like, I'm a little dizzy, you know, I lack of oxygen to the brain where I'm just kind of looking around like, Oh shit. Like I love that feeling, you know, it's just pushing myself as hard as I, as I can. And that's what honestly like brings me back. If you told me I go to the gym, you, all right, Liam, go to the gym and do an RPE five where you just kind of like, you know, you do the weight, you set it down. You're like, Oh, okay. Like that's, that wasn't that hard. I would not want to go to the gym. Yeah, I for don't sure. like that. I love I love to just like all out and I'm just fucking exhausted. There's no way I could have ever done another rep. If you had said, here's a million dollars to do another rep, I wouldn't be able to. I love that. But a lot of people, they hate that more than anybody. Yeah. Like, that's what they hate about the gym. I, I was at the point where I was doing the the whole push myself to everything. And I, I enjoyed it when I was doing that. And now I'm like, I don't really want to do that anymore. I've actually started working on stuff like yeah. handstands and everything. And it's... And so like, you it's can, just, everyone's that different. Tradition. Everyone's allowed to do. For sure. And, and well. I think that honestly, so you what you're describing that, that really push yourself to the limits. I think that that is its own sort of style of training that should be reserved for when you have become extremely informed about the activity that you're doing. So not, not That's just on a technical, fair. not just from a technical standpoint of how to perform the activity also from understanding how your body is going to respond to that activity. Like say you are like, we've all probably, I'm just going to speak for you guys, but uh, we've probably all taken time away from training at points in our life and then come back to training. And it's like, okay, well, I remember I used to push myself really hard. So these first few weeks are going to suck, but I'm just going to push myself really hard. And then your joints hurt really bad or you get injured in some way. Your body literally cannot like, it can't process that much stress because you're just not as up to date with that activity. So I think that honestly, like being able to push yourself the way that you're describing successfully and not injure yourself or not cause some sort of major setback, it requires that sort of slow buildup, that spiral of I'm, I'm not only building up my technical understanding of this activity, but I'm also building up my understanding of how my body is going to respond to it. And that in itself is up to date. And and in doing so, I have built a trust um, in myself and in myself performing this activity that this is now an acceptable or something that I can acceptable thing to do that that's that's successful and and doesn't cause those those major setbacks. But I, I think that using a lot of people see that and think that is an appropriate soul method of training. And I, I just truly disagree with it. I don't think that throwing yourself up against a wall by itself is a very uh, wise training practice, because I think that you really do need those, that those steps up to it to prevent major setbacks, like injury. Like you can, you can get away with it. You can just be on a cycle of injuries and and you know, get a little bit hurt and then heal from it and a lot of athletes go their whole career and they do that 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 exact thing but you are going to pay the price for it in some way or another and it's going to overall it's going to impact your results and so like so i think that yeah. although that is perfectly fine and i and i do push myself like i push myself in the way that you describe occasionally but i i don't see that as my uh, my sole form of training. In fact, I don't even see that as a, like a very big component of my training. It's really, that is what I'm training for. That's what I'm trying to be able to do. Like what you're describing of being able to push yourself in the gym to where, you know, you've got no reps left. That's what I want to be able to do on the mats and jujitsu. I want to be able to push myself to those limits without getting hurt. Um, but I don't, I don't train my body to do that by doing it. I don't train my body to do that by going in and training as hard as possible in the gym to get better at training as hard as possible. All of my other training is those softer versions of it is making sure that my body can respond to an easier version first, that the responses that I make in to, to, uh, in response to those, to that information and that stimulus are the appropriate ones. And so that that I'm not going to just incur some 
immediate injury from making a bonehead move or something. You know, there's all sorts of information that you are gathering about the activity and about how your body responds to it leading up to that performance. So I think that what you're describing is almost like the sport aspect of lifting and the fact that I am preparing right. myself for this single performance that will come with some risk. Um, but when you're in sports, like you just kind of, okay, that risk, but I, I wouldn't consider that to be, um, a sustainable training practice is, is just pushing. This is something I've definitely experienced that I didn't really think about until hearing you just now is that, um, when I'm in a, like a good mood, I'm happy, everything like that. I do a lot more movement throughout the day, not just like the walking, but I actually do like limber movements and stuff, hang off things, uh, pull yeah. myself off things, you know? And then when I'm going through a, a depressive phase, I'm not doing that stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's very noticeable translating that to the gym. When I'm doing the movements and the happier thing, my body feels better going yeah. into the lifts. Yeah, exactly. I would say for, for people listening, like you really have to think about, you know, I'm trying to think how to describe this, like try, you know, you know, one of these angles, if you will, try, you know, some form of exercise and then really take stock in how you feel at the end of the day and what you enjoyed and what you didn't enjoy. Like, oh, I yeah. hated that part of it. I enjoyed that part of it. Because when I started working out, like I worked out, like, I think I was just like, okay, I'm going to start working out. And I worked out every day, mm -hmm. sometimes like twice a day, which smart decision, probably not, but that's what I did. And I found the pushing myself to failure is what like I enjoyed the most. Mm -hmm. So that's what I kept, kept me coming back and kept doing it over time. And I saw results from that. You can see results from a lot of things. I'm not saying you have oh, to yeah. do what I did, but find and so for but for some people that's what they dislike right. the most you know and they're like actually yeah. what i enjoyed was just you know being able to be at home and listen to some, you know my favorite music and i was i don't know dancing or i was you know i used this or that or whatever it was and like i enjoyed that aspect of it and you you have to just kind of dial in and find what you if not enjoyed hated the list yeah. let me put it, let me just put <laughs> i think I, I definitely think that that is is a, an effective approach is to kind of like, again, path of least resistance. What do I hate the least? But I think that they're out there for everyone is some sport aspect of movement that they can apply. And, and it can just be lifting, like you said, like, or, you know, it doesn't have to be lifting. It could be P90X yeah. or whatever, but like, you know, I, I want to show up and I want to <laughs> perform well doing this thing. I want, I want to feel good about myself and my performance afterwards. I, you don't, you're not just feeling good because you pushed yourself and just because, um, because of the endorphins and stuff that from moving your body, you're also feeling good because you feel good about what you just did. There is a psychological component to it. Right. So yeah, exactly. 100%. And so like the people who don't like that, they're not getting that same reward from, from, uh, from doing it that you are, but there is something out there that will, and, and, and that is actually what I'm constantly looking for with my own clients. And that's the reason I don't like to prescribe things early on is because I don't want to stifle that uh, for them. I want them to yeah. find the thing because it can be anything. It's really like it. I'd like to think yeah. there is something. Oh, yeah. I really 100%. Want to oh, yeah. like to think it's, there is yeah. it's true. And, and, and like, I mean, I've, I've worked with, you know, hundreds of people and, and everybody has something that they will change it from exercise to play. And, and for, and that's what happens in the gym, even right. when you're lifting, it's like, now I'm playing because again, I'm seeing that game mechanic. I'm, I'm seeing, I'm seeing bet reading yeah. between the lines and I'm seeing this. And it's, it's almost like uh, operating with like, uh, AR, uh, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, there's like this filter over what I'm doing. That's now it's fun. Like now it is, it's this different activity right. and, and, and it's, it's invisible to everybody else that can't see it because we all have things that we see other people do. And we're just like, like that. that does not look fun at all but 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 they yeah, see it and, and everybody has something like that and when you can plug into that thing then you you don't need to worry about motivation you don't need to worry about um right. like reminding yourself to train you, you don't really all of those things become just irrelevant because the the play aspect of it like right. turn a kid loose on a playground and they're not going to be like well, how many times should I run yeah. up the slide or how many, how many reps of climbing this ladder 
Six. The answer yeah. is always yeah, six. Yeah, that's right. They don't have to ask because they just know it's six. I, but yeah, they, they just go out and they yes. do it intuitively until they've had enough. And then they're thinking about doing it again afterwards and they can't wait to do it. And, and you know, it can be lifting weights. Yeah. It can be walking on your hands, yeah. but it literally can yeah. be anything. And that's why on my channel, I show right. so many different, like different hobbies that I do because I'm trying to show people that it's not so many people are like, will you just program me walking on my hand so I can be you? And it's like, you're not going to be me because I, there's so much complexity that's gone into my progress and training over the years. But also look at all these other cool options. They're all, they all work the same. It can be skateboarding. Like I, I added in skateboarding because I needed a lower body fun option to train. I, I ch- get most of my lower body training from free exposure to pistol squats. So every time I stand up or sit down, I do a pistol squat. Um, but I needed something that was going to give me a little bit more exposure throughout the day. And I wasn't doing enough standing and sitting. So I was like, I need something that's going to give me like 30 minutes at a time. So I picked skateboarding, but it also could have been, you know, it could have been anything. It could have been dancing. It could have been a different martial art wrestling, you know, any martial art, you're going to have to stand with your knees bent. And in doing so I'm building that function that then translates to all the other areas that that function is required. So uh, by working on my skateboarding, I go out and I train for an hour. I'm not thinking about this as a lower body strength activity. This is just skateboarding. And in doing so, then whenever I go to stand in my wrestling stance for the hour long open mat, now it's easy for me because I'm just regularly spending an hour with my knees bent doing skateboarding because you have to do it. And, and like I said, like, I, I don't want to tell people yeah. what that thing is for them. I want them to find it, but I want them to have a sort of like a little bit of guidance in, in figuring it out. And then once they figure it out, how to turn that yeah. play activity into sort of a structured practice. And yeah, that thing might even oh, change. Over time. Yeah. I mean, my stuff yeah. started yeah. as yeah. wanting to build up my hand balancing and my conditioning for that. But then since then, I've really just come to really enjoy quadrupedal movement and walk. I think that's my kid. Uh, but yeah, just, <laughs> it's not Liam's for once. Mine's yeah. finally sleeping for once in a while. But, but you know, um, that is the goal for everyone, right? Is to find something that, that they enjoy. And I love what you said there. Like every time I stand up, I'll do a pistol squat or something like that. I Listen, I, I love that for you. I hate that for me. I hate that idea of just like every once in a while throughout the day, I do this. No, 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 no. For me, for me, I need to get fucking dialed in. I go to the gym and I see some weights and I'm like, this is the only thing in the world that exists right now. Me and this weights, these these weights. And I just, I enjoy that thoroughly. And then, you know, I'll still try and stay active throughout the other day doing things, but I'm not like, oh, I'm just going to do one of this or one of that. I that, I don't like that idea. And so you have to just kind of find like the, the that that avenue oh, for sure. that works for you and it becomes not yeah working. And you definitely have to find what's for yeah. you but i will say that i am getting more exposure outside of the gym doing the same function than you are getting inside the gym just statistically i spend 23 24 times more time outside of the gym than you do in the gym on any given day so it's right. just that it's it's just not even a fair comparison so that's what i noticed is that and that's the reason that i i stopped training my pistol squats in the gym and i started training them with standing and sitting up standing and sitting from the floor is that i'm getting significantly more reps doing it that way i get way 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 more exposure because but I think you would agree with me, though, that if you're in order to for, we yeah. say progressive overload, right? Like so like if, if I'm doing but if I'm doing like a set of squats to, to to failure, I need to do that less frequently than someone who's just doing them like one here. one. Yeah, there, exactly. Yeah, I, I, I really I never, ever take I, I can't even remember the last time I took a set of pistol squats to failure because the thing is, I don't right. want that function to fail. I want to be able to stand up on one leg and count on it to always work because I need to be able to trust my abilities. So like things like hanging, posting weight on my hands, my be able my ability to squat. I don't even want to know what the limits of that are because I want to know that I can push it to wherever I need it to go and that there is a huge cushion of ability that that is keeping me from hitting failure. So that way I never have to interface with it because if I'm doing wrestling or jujitsu or skateboarding and I fail that rep, well, now there's going to be a much bigger consequence than the rep being over. Now there's going to be somebody on top of me or I'm going to be on the ground bleeding. Yeah, there's going to be face. something like that. Yeah. And so 
like I, I really don't even want to take it to failure in that sense because I don't want to fail that function. I want it to be so normalized and, and, and it becomes much more apparent with things like hanging because if I were to fail, I will fall and bust my head open. So whenever you see me doing things like hanging upside down for things like skin the cat or being like hanging upside down on my, um, my, pull up, my little door frame pull up bar, if I, if I took that to failure, if that was a regular thing, then, I mean, I wouldn't be able to do the things that I'm able to do on it. I'm only able to because I trust that that failure is so far beyond what I'm actually trying to do that I never actually have to interface with it. And I can just trust my abilities. Um, and, and, and in doing so, you, you actually get a lot more of a deeper understanding of how those abilities work because you're, you're just, you're operating within the boundaries of, of how they work much more frequently. Um, so something like a pull up or a pistol squat to me is just walking now. And in fact, even doing a handstand is just standing up for me now. It's not something that I think of as like something that I take to failure because you, do you take standing to failure? Like it's just something that I do and I, I never push it to its limits because. And heck failure with a, with this handstand isn't falling over, it would be your arms collapsing and you exactly, falling on your yeah. head. Right. So, I mean, and I, I come out of handstand, but I also sit down off of my feet occasionally as well. So. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm listen, I, I just think it's just different basic methodologies where like, yeah. I'm not going to fail on just doing one pull up at any point because I, yeah, just, you know, I, I, yeah, I'll do a set of pull ups to absolute failure, but it wouldn't be just like throughout the day. If I did a pull up, I would just fail on it. Like, I think it's just, Oh yeah, for sure. It's for me, it's just that I, oh, yeah. I yeah. don't want to spend too much time failing. Like I, I don't want to spend too much. I actually yeah. think you spit. I think you learn a lot more from winning than losing. And I think that the, the old adage that, you know, you win or you lose, uh, or sorry, you, you, you win or you learn is, is really just kind of like, um, uh, like a way to sort of, um, make ourselves feel better because I think winning, if you think about it like this, uh, like take, take any subject, right. And before you know anything about it, right. It's just this big, empty, dark room. And then as you, as you get uh, exposed to the subject, as you learn about it, right, you're kind of like shedding light on that room itself. Well, when you, when you fail something, right, you're, you're literally just saying that's not the right direction, but you're not shedding any light on much light on what the actual correct direction to walk through that room is. When you have success, it immediately spotlights, oh, this is a path through this room. So I try to succeed all the time. So that way I'm constantly finding paths through this activity, whether it's walking on my hands, jujitsu, skateboarding, or whatever, like these are all viable, successful paths. Whenever I fail something, I'm hitting a brick wall. I'm just basically all I learned from that is don't go that direction. It doesn't provide any additional information on where I should be going other than not there. And so I, I try to constantly be succeeding when I'm working because well, and also I'm 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 really focusing on skill-based movements too. So although there is a lot of skill in, in weightlifting, like it's it's not, I wouldn't say as complex as, as an activity as something like breakdancing or skateboarding or jujitsu or something like that. But when you get into in calisthenics included, like I, I think that when you are constantly failing, you're you're really seeing what doesn't work. But when you're constantly succeeding, you're 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 lighting up that room much faster because you're seeing all of the viable paths that you can then practice that. And when you have those, then you can practice more often. Interesting. For, I see. Uh, for me, I I prefer that I love to fail. I love because for me, that's how <laughs> yeah. I work. like that's I, 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 I love to fail because that shows life. that it doesn't it doesn't work. I love because like you said, no, you're correct in that like with lifting weights, it's very basic. It's like you if it starts here, it goes here. That's it, right? Like it's not complex at all. But like going to failure that shows me where failure is if i just go into the gym right okay let's say i go to the gym i do one bench press one done that's it i never i don't know where failure is i don't oh, know yeah. how much i can do could i do 12 reps could i do 20 i don't know the only way for me to know is to push myself at least close to that limit if not all the way to that to that limit and so like don't go who doesn't love to succeed but i think you know you can you obviously learn from for sure. both of them but i would like i enjoy 
like, you know, like what's it, Edison? I learned a thousand ways to not make a light bulb. So then eventually you learn one way to make it. I mean, he stole all his inventions and fuck that guy. He was an asshole. But, but that, the point but, is, oh, you know, but I, I was going to say stealing is honestly, that is the that's that's just choosing the success approach. You've, you're taking somebody else's success and they're like, OK, well, that, there's where the light is in the room. <laughs> Right. Okay. Right. That's it. That's the success right there. That's a way to see it. That's uh, see Liam it. knows all yeah, about and stealing. I'm a, I'm a big, I'm yeah. a big proponent of stealing because honestly, I mean, that's, that is the benefit of being a human being is that, right. right yeah. We're, we're I, no success. single human is all yeah. that smart, yeah. but like we are so intelligent because we pass down, you know, we have generational, we, we have generational knowledge. Yeah. And so it's like, as I'm, as I'm working, like I can, I can, do trial and error and and take all of those failures and use those like in Minesweeper as the X's to not click on the, the adjacent squares, right. right? But wouldn't it be nicer if I could just see what's underneath all of those squares? Like if I already knew, then I don't even have to run into all of those walls. I just, I just, I just right. navigate right. through it. Like with jujitsu, like jujitsu. But you are in that sense learning from other people's failures. Oh, 100 so percent I just don't want I just don't want to have failure. to be the one to, to do that. Because <laughs> like you'll only be you'll only have one lifetime to make enough failures okay. to make progress. But yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, 100%. No, I'm with you. And and with and with my training practices, I'm actually kind of like pioneering a lot of the stuff that I'm doing. And so I don't have time to make a thousand failures to to carve out this path. I actually just need to find all of the avenues that are accessible because I don't have time to, I don't have a whole lifetime to figure this out and pass it on to someone else. I need to figure out what the viable paths are now so I can pass on and shed that light for someone else so that they can build on it themselves. As a coach, it's not my job to just be good at stuff. It's also my job to be able to show people how they can get there as well. So I don't want to just bump into the wall and be like, don't go that direction. Instead, I want to be like, hey, you could go here, you could go here. These are all... You want Not to just options, options, but these are viable yeah. paths it's, to success. Yeah. They both, right? Nice. It's great because you two have like com the exact opposite methodologies, and I just want to emphasize for the, our listening audience: they're both valid. Right. Exactly. You know, yeah. I think we were saying that all along. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, just I different. just want to emphasize. Yeah, that. but I, honestly, I think that like all training methods are valid. It's just that you're going to have varying degrees of effectiveness. Um, and, and yeah. I think that there's just so many factors that go into any training method that there's not going to be one specific thing that's just yeah. better or worse. It's all a nebulous of trying to find a system that works for <laughs> you because it's, you know, it, it's not, you're not just yeah. working to failure and I'm not just not working to failure. There's a whole lot more that goes into both of right. those training methods than, than just that. That's very reductionist. In fact, I would say that there's probably more similarities to our training styles than differences, just because we're both human beings who are training think, with human right. bodies. I think we can both agree that it's just like, it's just doing the thing that you have found. And it, it, for so yes. many people, what ha what happens? You know, they start training. It works. Like, whatever the fuck they're doing, it works. And then they get bored of it. They get tired of it. They don't like it anymore. Something happens. They stop doing it. That's the problem right there. It's just right. finding. Yeah. Like you said with the, uh, you know, you, you people ask you for, like, uh, a plan. And that I get that with diet, where people are like, just give me just give me the things to eat. No, no, no. Just tell me what exactly to eat and what amounts. And I'm like, uh, yeah. like that's not how. Right, this, because you, you know, could give them something that no. might be like, I would, I won't say objectively good, because again, like there's not everything is. Like, they could right, be allergic right. to strawberries, and you give them to like you eat twenty strawberries a day, and then they're dead. Right, right. But right, like, right. you know, like there's more that goes into it than that. Like, also, are those things palatable enough for them to eat every day and not go into a deep exactly. depression from eating disgusting food to them every mm -hmm. single day? Because that's going to have a big impact on yeah. it too. So. Yeah, it's. I think that 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 exactly. social and psychological element to your training, all of those things are just important, just as important as the actual movements yeah. methodology itself. Even if not more important. Yeah, like, and, honestly, and that's why whenever I'm working with people, is. like I actually have to go through this whole like rebirth period with them where I'm introducing my concept because just like how right now you're kind of like like not struggling to understand the concept, but struggling maybe to to see it in the exact same way that I see it, but from the same level of, right. of just getting it, like I like and loving it, like my training style, because you're just not as intimately um, uh, familiar with it. But right. yeah, like I, 
I, I have to go through this whole sort of rebirth period whenever I'm working with clients to introduce that this is even an acceptable avenue because it's not about me trying to implement or not trying to like superimpose my training style onto them. It's just to show them that this is a viable option. If you don't want to go yeah. through this injury cycle all the time, you can just, instead of jumping up the stairs, you can just walk up the ramp really super slowly. And occasionally you're going to have to walk back down the ramp and there's going to be a lot that goes into it. Right. But it, it's this different approach and it, it, it is so different that a lot of times people really it does it kind of like, it, it feels, it feels Throws wrong. Guard, like they're yeah. like, Oh, I'm not. So, so that's the reason yeah. that I'm such a proponent of it. Isn't necessarily because I think it's the only viable method. It's just that the one that I have to argue the most for because. Yeah, I see that. And that's why I really wanted to bring you on because it's so different. And there's so many people out there that think that you have to go to the gym and go to failure. And some people love that like Liam. Yeah. But there's so many people that yeah. don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. They think they have to, but they be, have so much more enjoyment out of doing something like you're doing or or even something else. There's other things people could be yeah, doing. Yeah, there's, there's so infinite. many different like, things. I mean, I don't even think that you have to work out at all. I think that once you establish a practice and you and you define what that practice is, like me walking on my hands, then you don't need to actually set aside any time to do it. Like I was saying, this concept that I call free XP, free exposure it's, it's truly the greatest pull of exposure to any physical function that you can possibly get because, again, you're just spending most of your time not in the gym, not working out. So, like, say something like I want to, like, go back to my, my pistol squat example. That can be applied to anything. It doesn't have to be something as advanced as a pistol squat. Like, if, like, you wanted to say I, I don't want to go to the gym, but I also don't want to do P90X in my living room, and I also don't want to do yoga, and I don't want to do any of that shit, right? But I do want to be able to... Right. you know, bend down and pick up my kids or I want to be able to garden for an extended period of time. And that's what most people want. Yeah. So it's like, take a snapshot yeah. of what that yeah. function is that you want to do. I want to be able to, to be able to kneel in my garden for a half hour without my knees feeling like they're going to explode. And then you can dose a version of that into your daily life without having to actually set aside time to train that thing in a session. Because honestly, like sitting in a kneeling position to practice that and actually setting aside time to it for it that sounds horrible that sounds so boring and dumb and i like i just like nobody would ever find the time to do it but you can sit there and watch tv in a modified version of your gardening position and if you do that over a long enough period of time the gap between how you feel and how you want to feel will slowly start to close and you didn't have stuff to set aside any time to do it. You didn't actually have to think about it as training. You didn't have to think about it as a game. You just altered activities that you're already doing. And that's the reason I call it free exposure or free XP is because there's no time cost for it. You're taking a, an activity that you're already doing and you're modifying it to contribute to your practice, whatever that thing that is that you've defined, whether it be squatting or posting on your hands. I mean, it can literally be anything. It can be a skill-based thing. It can be, you know, whatever, but finding a way to take the activities that you're already doing and then and swap them out for a version of that thing. You don't actually need to train at all because you're practicing that thing. Um, it's kind of more like uh, you're right. reorganizing your life as opposed to adding anything additional into it. Um, and it doesn't, and, and it doesn't have to be something like the pistol squad example where, you know, you're like, I don't want to have to dose that out throughout the day. It can be something eat much more passive than that. Even for something like pistol squats, you can just take like, Oh. What are the components of a pistol squat? I need to have hip, knee, and ankle compression. I need to be able to hold myself in that position on one foot. So if I can just sit in any version of that, like this, I know you guys can't see me too well because I'm wearing black pants, but right now I'm now working on my pistol squat, right? And in fact, I can prove it because this foot is not touching anything. Right. And so something passive like this, like sitting here having a conversation, it doesn't have to be like, oh, I'm attaching it to a movement. And now I'm just just guising exercise as um, a, as a mundane movement. I'm actually this is just how I would be sitting. I'm just making a slight modification to contribute to the components of the function, like a pistol squat that I want to. And then over time, that will straight up just unlock that skill. And I didn't have to set aside. And for those listening, he was sitting on the couch, kind of sitting on his foot, knee bent. Oh uh, yeah, I forgot on we, one leg. Might just have my uh, my dad 
my dad, he used to make me do like the butterfly stance when I was still training Taekwondo. Like whenever we would be like watching TV shows or something like that, he wouldn't let me sit on the couch. He would make me sit on the floor with like my heels, like touching each other like that to work on like my stretch. That's a perfect example. And And then, and then him telling you to do it that again, that's sort of guising uh, exercise as a mundane activity. But if you can find a semi comfortable way to do that and you don't, you're not no longer even thinking about the butterfly stretch at that point, it's no longer taking up any space in your schedule or in your mind and you are making improvements on that. Skill. Yeah. So in that way, it's like the, and, and then yeah. at, at the beginning, it's like, Oh, I'm only improving one thing. But if you layer those practices over time and like right now I have many different practices, I'm constantly improving at things when I'm not even aware of it. Like I'm not even thinking about it because all of my activities have been reorganized to contribute to slowly gravitate mm-hmm. towards those various physical practices and i actually don't ever Mm -hmm. really set aside time to train outside of uh maybe like 20 or 30 minutes of just whatever i feel like a day i i really i don't set aside training for my handstand practices i don't set aside training for my pistol squats for one arm chin-ups and i think even hearing that kind of rubs people the wrong way sometimes because they work so hard (laughs) and they work so hard to maintain that skill i'm like like yeah. You, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. It's, there is a, there is a way to do it without, without putting all of that effort behind it, not only to gain it, but then to maintain that skill because, you know, it's strength and flexibility. Aren't these permanent attributes that you get once you unlock them, they, they go away just as quickly as you get them. So if, if so if you're not swapping out some of your activities for, uh, for a version of that, then, then the time that you spent getting it, well, you'll just have to continue perpetuating that time as long as you want to continue having that skill. And I don't, I don't actually want to have a reliance on, um, working out anyways. I don't want to have to be like, well, if I don't make this time, I lose my abilities. That's scary. I would rather the maintenance of the abilities just be built into how I live my life. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that just goes to show everybody has, you know, that, that, the, the method that they like. And after this, I'm probably right now going to grab some food and go to the gym. So uh, yeah. ex- <laughs> let us know again where people can find you so they can learn all, all of uh, some yeah, more. Yeah. So uh, XP movement on TikTok, annual Nathaniel on Instagram, XP movement on YouTube. Um, and then I also have a guide coming out for walking on your hands. And it's pretty much the same methodology that I have disclosed with you guys today it's basically the paradigms parameters and principles that i kind of laid out for you guys that um that go into my method and then also a uh an entire chapter on loading options for your hands ranging from it's a level based system ranging from level zero to level 10 all the way from putting your hands on the wall up to jumping into handstand push-ups so um it, there the pre-sale for that is actually going to be starting tomorrow and you can find that on uh the bio of any of my social medias awesome awesome i'll have to check that out since yeah yeah it's and it kind of gamifies the whole process too because you can just kind of plug in wherever you're at and there will always be an accessible option there for you i'm just waiting for uh, more technology so you know you got the vrs now that's great but one day it'll just be like glasses and then fucking. i mean at a certain point you're just gonna plug nodes into your muscles and then they'll just kind of like grow and learn the skills automatically like in the matrix when they start implanting things are you guys gonna hop right on board or are you gonna you gonna wait a while to see make sure they work i'm kind of right on board immediately like oh you want to inject something so i can play a game fuck yeah let's go how much about metal legs sounds good so think about getting metal legs (laughs) <laughs> oh <laughs> metal legs is fucking dope that's pretty cool i want i want you know i'll i'll take whatever like you know whatever the the gaming stuff is yeah that's yeah, let's go that sounds fun <laughs> man i'm to torn between both of those because on one hand to pay out and pay like let me just like fucking <laughs> let me just pay with that shit i got the chip right here i'm good let's go i'm all about technology i fucking love technology a lot of people are scared now 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 let's go bring it let's go sure. <laughs> i'm torn because you know metal legs I don't have to ever worry about my knee giving up when hiking, but exactly gaming. I mean, okay, but what do we? How do we feel about an arm with instead of one elbow, we have two elbows? Like it's like it's like hyper, it like hyper extends, you know? So like is that better? Is two elbows is two elbows better than one <laughs> more elbow? More is more. Arguably, I think you're just 
I think more, actually, more, actually that's more. that's one of my uh, one of my go to catchphrases whenever I'm talking about giving exposure. I'm always telling people more is more. So that's another that that's another yeah, adage that I don't more. agree with is less is more because it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> win all the time more is and more is and more. always win <laughs> hey guys guys i drank this entire thing without you're, you're a pro it. good job you're a pro there we go. Hey, I'm, you i'm worked, winning it you worked Bam. really hard for that skill <laughs> damn straight i did okay but like actually on a real note this like sitting through and like listening to you talk and stuff like that was actually really really like eye-opening a lot of the stuff that you said made me like actually deep dive into like things that I did before and just really think about how I could like go back and like structure things better and work my way to the results that I actually want to achieve and like a more like emotionally friendly way in a sense. So thank you so much for like, thank you so much for your insight and thank you so much for letting me sit here and just, you know, take like mental notes and stuff like that. But yeah. Hey, dude, you're like, awesome. You're hey, awesome. and I'm glad that it was eye opening for you. Cause usually when I'm talking, it's eye closing for people. So as they fall asleep. Oh, oh. <laughs> I think a lot of people already kind of have confirmation bias where they believe like for me, you know, like I believe that, oh, just lifting weights to failure is the only way and that's it. And it's like, no, I think there's lots of methods. I just Oh, no, I was just saying I bore people to sleep when I go on a a tirade. Oh, Oh. (laughs) that was probably the nicest outro we've ever had. Usually it's one of us, you know. Insulting yeah, each no, I'm, other. I'm glowing now. That's going to be that's going to be with me for weeks. I'm going to actually think that I have some sort of value now. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> you're not. You're no longer your worst. <laughs> no, no, don't be your worst. Oh, don't gosh. be your worst. Hey, wasn't that a great time? Listen to the podcast. You were just, I'm assuming you knew or you were just listening to in moderation. So if you go ahead and hit the, the five star button, is that a thing? Uh, the like that, button? That's a thing. No. Yep. The like button five on stars. YouTube. If you're on YouTube, hit the like button. Not the dislike button. That's a bad button. The bad like button. button. Bad Don't button. touch. Hit all, Don't so hit you. all the other buttons. The share, the, the go, you can go check out. All those things. Subscribe. Go check out our Patreon. Yeah. We have we do have a Patreon. It's free to join if you want, or you could give us money. That'd be really cool. Like a dollar or two. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Whatever you have. That's, That's super, where you'll find super, all the news for this. We're super appreciative. You can find all sorts of other stuff there. We do giveaways, I think, sometimes. You know, sometimes. all that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, peace.